All right, everybody, let's get back to our seats. We're going to start up again. Now, what I just started laying around with the next phone, with the next phone, okay? And because of the time situation that we've got going here, I'm going to um, talk about this phone more than demo this phone. So I'm going to talk about it while it's going around. And again, to get back on schedule, while that's going on, I'm going to have a second phone following the first phone. This is going to get us back on schedule, okay? The one that's going around first is called the Motorola Droid. Droid. You've heard the commercial, right? Motorola Droid. What I'm about to pass out after it, pass around, not pass out. <laughs> what I'm going to pass around after it is the iPhone. This is the iPhone 4G. The newest, latest, and greatest when it comes to iPhone technology. Okay? So I'm going to be talking about the droid, but we're passing around first the droid and then the iPhone. So let's talk things droid. Um, and in order to do that, I'm going to back you up for a second. Remember that we've been talking about features of phones, and one of the most important features of those phones for us is, how can I tell one button from the other? And now I start passing you around phones that are almost, look, Mom, no buttons. <laughs> Darn close to that. This is touch screen technology. Touch screen technology. Now let's talk about the uh, droid here. Let me see if I can get that. Oh, I got to get past this. I'm running behind. There we are to the droid, okay? First off, the droid operates under the Surprise, surprise, surprise. The Android operating system brought to us by those fine people at Google. It is an open source operating system. What's open source mean? It means nobody owns it and everybody does. You do not have to buy an open source product. And the developers are anybody who's interested enough to look into the code that makes it work and try to make it work even better. That's the nature, nature of the droid operating system. It goes on to a phone. That phone, in turn, in order to be accessible to you and me, has to have several things added to it. One is it needs some way to interact with the opening screen or the desktop, if you will. And one of the ones that, or in fact, the one that they uh, talk about the most right now is called the Eyes Free Shell, a program which you add to your Motorola Droid to make it possible for you to do things on that touch screen. Now, what it does, and it, you have to imagine this because, again, there are no keys here to be touching. You need to put your finger down in the middle of the screen. Voila, that is now five on the numeric keypad. You can assign purposes to where the one key would be if there was one, where the two key would be if there was one, etc. So when you put your finger down on the five and you move it up, what number would you land on? So you can assign, read me the status bar. So what you're really doing is training the phone that when you put your finger on it and stroke upward, read me the status. When you put your finger on it and go down, what number do you go to? Eight. So you can train it so that when you put your finger down and go down, it's going to read you missed calls. So you kind of train it to eight possible gestures. Up, down, left, right, up, left, up, right, down, left, down, right. Eight different, or excuse me, yeah, is that right? Eight different things you can do here. Now that is what this particular product does What's the price tag to add it to your droid phone? Nothing. It's open source. Next. It has the ability to talk to you. What good is it without a screen reader, right? So TalkBack allows it to talk to you. Now, it's not a full-fledged screen reader. It will not say everything at all times. But it will say most things most times. Kickback. Uh huh. You want to quick run that up to me and I'll turn it off? What they did was they accidentally started ABBA singing 
on the iPhone. All right, pass it on now, it's fine. So, you just wanted to have a concert, I understand. I understand. Anyway, so you have to add to the phone this program called TalkBack for it to talk back to you. You also can, but you don't have to, Bullet sound dash back. put in sound back. That means that all the things you do to the phone will make some kind of noise, you know, like a beep or a squawk or something. Hold on. Did I jump past kickback? Oh, pardon me. Kickback means they take advantage of the vibrator so that each time you touch something, remember the screen's got eight somethings on it. How do you know you're not touching between two somethings? Well, as you move your finger around, it'll go when you touch something. First time you'll drop it, so make sure you're sitting on the couch. All right. But it does feel almost like a little vibrating shock. And it's not negative once you know what is, what's going on. Okay, So you have these three kinds of feedback. You have the tones, you've got the speech, and you've got the vibration going. And on top of that, you have this fourth program, uh, the uh, Ice Free, that allows you to navigate through that home screen by gestures. But this Motorola is also a slide phone. You can turn it sideways just like you could my SMT5800 and slide it open. Unlike my SMT5800, this one has four row QWERTY keyboard. It also has a D-pad to the right. I think that's what they're called, a D-pad. That's the cursor pad, up, down, left, right, select in the middle to go through things. That's your cursor keys. Okay? Now, in spite of the fact that you can go get a Motorola Droid phone um, and the software is free and you can turn certain things on because it's built into the Android operating system, you cannot do that independently. You must do as I did just before we started here today because when I was playing with it at 4 o'clock this morning, it suddenly stopped doing anything. I brought Mark into my office and said, make it work, Uncle Mark. And Uncle Mark went through some step-by-step -step procedures to turn on all of the features that were built into the phone. But you need to turn them on. And even then, not all of the applications, and in fact, most of the applications on the Droid will not work for you. We said that on a typical phone, you want to be able to, surprise, use it as a phone. That's not accessible on a droid unless you add a program to it called voice data. Now, voice data is not where you talk to it. It talks to you, but it turns the touch screen keypad into something you can dial with. And it's a smartphone, so you should be able to do email, right? Not with what comes on it. You have to get something called a canine a free open source email client. You can do Twitter on it, but you better get yourself a self-voicing Twitter app because the one that's on it doesn't work. There is one out there called Swift Twitter. I don't know how, much, how fast I want Twittering to go on in my life that I need to be named Swift Twitter. That'd be like one of them hummingbirds, right? <clears throat> um, and the same thing is true for the web browser for the client manager. So you've got to ask yourself, is this a phone for the faint of heart? No, it is not. In fact, all of my friends who are phone fanatics, who went out and got a droid to play with, say the same thing. We're still in the world of the wild, wild west when it comes to the droid. You need to be willing for it not to do everything your previous phone could do, but keep loading and trying out new beta software over and over and over again. I had to have Mark come in there because last night they sent out a new version of Droid and I needed to update it before it would let me do anything. 
And in updating it, it automatically turned off some of the features I had turned on. So I had to turn them on again. And in the past 72 hours, they came up with major improvements in the screen or in the web browser, in the email reader, in the sound player in the last 72 hours. So if you thought you would get a phone, a nice droid, because everybody's getting them. In fact, guess what? The droid or the Android-based phones have now sold more than the iPhone. It's that popular out there. The marketing is spectacular. Plus, I think people would dearly love to embrace something that's open source and from Google than something from Apple or Microsoft or one of the big, bad phone companies. Okay. So nonetheless, this is what the droid is all about. If anybody here was thinking about getting a droid, bow! If anybody was thinking about getting a droid, I'd love to create a small droid users group and we'll get together over a beer and update our systems and you know you show me yours I'll show you mine kind of thing going on but it's really for people who are interested in that kind of an experience with a phone this is nowhere near this is the inverse of plug and play it, this particular droid I got from Verizon. Uh, let me make sure I'm saying this right. I've got so many phones, I'm trying to remember this one. Yeah, it's Verizon. Yeah, this is Verizon. The, um, I went to try to do the same thing from AT&T because the Verizon bill is my bill and the AT&T bill is the Carroll Center's. And who wouldn't want it to be on the Carroll Center's bill? But, Unfortunately, they did not have one yet, and they're coming out with them fast and furious, and I'm sure AT&T now has one that would work in this fashion.